Church in Christ, as we begin today, we're still in Matthew 7. And Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And as we've talked about, there's question marks there. The question marks involve the name. And we see the word many. Um, we're warned about the many false prophets. So how do we identify the many? What's the difference between the many and the few? First uh, Corinthians 10, Paul makes an interesting statement here. In chapter 10, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all drink the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. The Old Testament talks about the rock. Paul mentioned, and as we saw in Matthew 16, the Lord himself, verse 17 in that area, he told Peter upon this rock, the revelation of Christ, I would build my church. This is what the few are preaching as compared to the many. Many throw out many, uh, many names, but like an access code, like a, uh, a phone number, you have to have the entire name in order to get through to the throne. Now, many people say, well, God knows your heart, the name of Jesus. Yeah, but the, what the Lord's asking in return is, do you know his heart? Has he revealed himself to you? Many claim to know God, but how many are known of God? Galatians 4, 9, asks, Paul asked that question. To be known, to know God, or rather to be known of God. And you have an accuser of the brethren, the devil, who goes about seeking whom he can devour. He's looking for technicalities, and God cannot lie. So if, it, if the Bible, which we have pointed out, does clearly state that it's, as we will see today, it's the doctrine of Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, that no other name is given under heaven, Acts 4, 10 through 12, then a God who cannot lie would have to hold to that, would he not? And as we see in verse 5 here of 1 Corinthians 10, but with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Today, many of God's people are being overthrown in the wilderness as well, a religious wilderness, a wilderness of false doctrines, of watered-down, wishy-washy doctrines that don't proclaim Christ. They talk about all these works and all these other religious stuff, that are a waste of time. It's he that does the will of God that will endure forever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lusted. And if we turn over here to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to start in verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Remember, we talked yesterday, there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 8, 1 tells you that. It makes manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. We preach the doctrine of Christ. That makes manifest the savor of God. For we are unto God a sweet savor in Christ in them that are saved, and in them that are perished. To the one we are savor of death unto death, and to the other we are savor life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, anybody who's watched uh, some of these programs on TV, it's like professional wrestling. It has been so hyped up, uh, perverted which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. It, your 
doctrine and our revelation, the name has to involve Christ. That's the name which is above every name. And that's the name that's revealed to God's people so that you can access the throne. He's, the Lord himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's a narrow path. He said, this is the only way to my throne. And this is the name that gets you there. And this is the revelation of Christ that shows you who his people really are. And some of the stuff you see, everybody wants to sell you a book or a DVD or all, or, uh, you know, all these books. Well, why don't you stick with the book? And here's something I don't understand. How do people sell the word of God? Bible says freely you receive, freely give. So I'm not I'm not able to come to terms with all these people that want to sell you a book or a tape or a DVD in, in quote, the name of the Lord. You know, 1 John tells us how we can test the spirits, how we can try. And if you look, it's as we begin here, it's going to talk about spirits, not people. Many people judge by, the, oh, you know, they've got a big church and a lot of people, a lot of excitement, a lot of loud music. But how do you test to see if it's really of God? 1 John 4, 1 tells you that. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test or try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many, there's that word many again, which we saw in Matthew 7, 22. Many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye. Now there's the word know. Unto you is given to know. We want to know so that we can eliminate those question marks in Matthew said. There should be no question mark. You should have the answers. The Bible says that we need to have the answer to any man who would ask of the hope was of this. Um, 1 Peter 3.15 talks about that. Colossians 1.27 tells you it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's your only hope of glory, being led by the Spirit. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Well, your profession is the doctrine of Christ. Your profession, your prayers, your doctrine involves Christ. I would not end a prayer without naming the name of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ, because that's your access code. That identifies you with God. And as we'll see, we'll see the ones that aren't. And in the name they're given that don't know God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that of Antichrist, where you heard it that it should come and it even now already is in the world. Do you see the name that's left out? The name that has not been revealed to these people. I have heard so many doctrines. So many people, power in the name of Jesus. Oh, that matchless name. I listened to a guy the other night on the radio, and I just, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is a common name. Jesus describes half the equation. We're born of the flesh and of the spirit. Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of God. That's the complete name that makes you complete. That's the name that gets you to the throne and identifies you with God. Those that aren't of God are Antichrist. They don't know who the Son is. And no man knows. We discussed that in an earlier study, Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. No man knows unless it's personally revealed. Well, why in the last days is the enemy described as Antichrist? Because he's trying to keep that name and that doctrine out of the church. Why? 1 Corinthians 1, 24. Christ, the power and wisdom of God. You take those two things off the table, what do you got? Religion. A wilderness of religion. And wilderness refers to a desert, a dry place with not much water, unless Christ is involved. And you, you are of God, little children, uh, 1 John 4, 4, and you have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are the world, therefore speak to the world, and the world hears them. There's so many worldly doctrines out there that don't involve Christ. Um, and you can go back here in 2.21. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. So here we see the word no again. The question mark is, is eliminated. 
who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whosoever denies the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Remember the Lord said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before Father. Who's the me? Well, Christ. Remember what he told the woman in the well at John 4, 23 and 20. She, she said in 24 and 25 in that range, I know when Christ comes, he will tell us all things. And what was Jesus' response? I that speak unto the M.P. <laughs> what did he call himself? Jesus the Christ. Christ in you is your only hope of glory. Second John here. Second John here. In verse 7. For many deceivers. Oh gosh, there's that word many again. Now we see what happened to the many. They were Not only were they deceiving, they were deceived themselves. They had not received the memo from above. It's Christ. It's his name. For many deceivers are entered the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is, not was, or gonna, is. What is there, what is the now faith is? Confession. The confession of the mouth. By the words you'll be justified, by the words you'll be condemned. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is what takes many people down. That's why there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ. And people are condemned already because they have not believed in the name. John 3.18 tells you that. Luke, uh, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Why in the last days is the enemy described as antichrist, not anti-Jesus? Oh, the name of Jesus. And Well, wait a minute. He's coming against the name of Christ. Jesus is half the answer. And halfway is not going to get you all the way. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. You don't want to be turned away at the day of judgment. Um, we saw that there in Matthew, Luke 13, 28 talks about when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all those in the kingdom of heaven, and you yourselves thrust out. That's going to be hell to see what you'd have had access to, what God provided and what he had planned for you, only to be thrust out because you didn't follow through with the plan of salvation. Verse 9, whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ, he doesn't have God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. You have to have this revelation because it allows you to access the Father. Then the Father shows you who the Son is and who you are in Christ. Christ in you is your only hope of glory. Antichrist is the enemy now because he's, he's come against that doctrine. Why did Paul, Paul himself, who preached the doctrine of Christ, when the scales were removed from his eyes? You can read Acts 9 and see that. All of a sudden, he could see Christ. Why did he suffer so much? He suffered for his name's sake. The Bible is very clear to tell you. If they're coming in unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that bids him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. I'm very picky about where I go, about who I uh, acknowledge as being of God, and they're very few, because I know a few people, not many, that know this doctrine of Christ, that know who Christ is, and have had that personal revelation. And it has to be revealed to you personally in order to understand that, because you don't want to be like the many. And I'm going to close here. In James 3, it tells you, in James 3, verse 1, be not many or like the many, they use the term masters or teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend not. If many men offend not in word, the word there means doctrine. The same as a perfect man enable also to bridle the whole body. That's doctrine, teaching. So folks, what is your doctrine? Actually, what is the doctrine that God acknowledges? We just talked about that in 2 John. So I leave you with this question. What is the doctrine you acknowledge? What is the name that you use to get to the throne? Is it enough to get you through? Or can it be thrown kind of like many of the, the, the justice system today? People are guilty, literally guilty as hell, but they get thrown out because of a technicality. So don't let the 
don't don't let the enemy stop you from accessing all that you have available to you in Christ. God bless, church.